It's 1997. South Africa is three years into democracy. Still fragile, broke, and under pressure to enact a newly penned constitution. State resources are needed. Mandela's government forms the South African Revenue Service, SARS. Its first commissioner, Pravin Gordon, sets out to achieve what he calls a higher purpose, to develop the country by increasing tax revenue. Gordon also declares war on white-collar crime. Reaching into the dark corners of the corporate sector is vital if SARS is going to meet its targets. Landmark cases make headlines. Big players in the retail sector bow to the tax authority, and SARS quickly becomes one of the country's most respected state institutions. By collaborating with law enforcement agencies, it makes a habit of stepping on bigger and bigger toes. 2007, amid growing pressure to bring tax dodgers and smugglers to book, a special projects unit is set up by Deputy Commissioner Ivan Pillay. It's equipped to handle the most dangerous, sensitive and high profile of cases under the leadership of experienced agent Johan von Loggenberg. In 2009, Jacob Zuma becomes President of South Africa. Gordon leaves SARS to join his cabinet as finance minister. He's replaced by Opa Mahashula. It's here the rules of engagement shift. That year, dismissed SARS employee Mike Piga releases a dossier called Project Snowman to the media. It claims SARS spied on and targeted politicians and Zuma sympathizers. There's no proof, and the tax authority denies the allegation. But it transfers several implicated officials for safety's sake until only seven agents remain in the renamed High Risk Investigations Unit. The HRIU forges ahead regardless, straight into the beginning of its endgame. Later that year, the unit finds evidence showing state officials and members of the illicit tobacco task team are involved in the illegal tobacco trade. Despite the risks, von Loggenberg strikes up a romantic relationship with Belinda Walter, a lawyer working for the tobacco industry, whose client is directly in SARS crosshairs. She's also a covert agent for the state security agency. The HRIU also investigates tender fraud by an influential Zuma-linked family, the Guptas. Early in 2014, SARS takes some of the HRIU's findings to the Hawks. South Africa's Directorate for Priority Crime Investigation. Nothing comes of it, but the following month, Zuma shifts Gordon out of the Finance Ministry, replacing him with his deputy, Ntlantlanene. That same month, Walter and von Loggenberg break up, but allegations about their relationship cause a stir in the media. Pelé sets up a panel to investigate the claims. The findings are inconclusive, so Pelé sets up the so-called Sekakane panel. Into the fray comes new commissioner, Tom Moyane, a Zuma appointment. He replaces Opa Mahashula, who is forced to resign in July after a phone call in which he offers a young woman a job is intercepted and leaked to the media. Moyane extends the mandate of the Sikakane inquiry to include the HRIU and launches a second investigation by KPMG. The KPMG report will end up costing taxpayers 22 million rand. It is yet to be released, and concerns raised by SARS about British American tobacco are also mysteriously left out. The cigarette company happens to be a KPMG client. Despite any concrete findings from either report, the Sunday Times under Felicia Oppelt uses them to publish a series of more than 30 damning, but factually and ethically questionable stories. They call the HRIU a covert operation, naming it the Road Unit and falsely implicate Pelé, Gordon, Mahashula, and von Loggenberg. Soon after the exposés start, Moyane suspends the entire SARS executive committee. In total, an unprecedented 55 senior SARS officials resign over the next two years. Witnessing attacks on the Treasury and its tax authority from all sides, Gordon takes the Sunday Times to the press ombudsman in November 2015. Then. Finance Minister Ntlantlanene is unexpectedly axed in December. The rand plummets. As over 100 billion rand disappears from the economy and the public reacts, Zuma swiftly backtracks under pressure. He grudgingly shifts Gordon back to his old job as Finance Minister on December 14th. Two days later, Press Ombudsman Johan Retief finds the Sunday Times reporting was inaccurate. He orders the paper to apologize, but the damage is done. 
the rogue unit narrative sticks, and false allegations of dirty dealings give the Hawks and the NPA Sean Abrams the chance to go after Gordon and his former colleagues. As Finance Minister, Gordon orders Mayane to stop restructuring at SARS in January 2016. Within weeks, he receives a letter from the Hawks, instructing him to answer questions about SARS' alleged spy. It's clear an amicable working relationship between tax authority and finance ministry is destroyed. What's not clear is what basis the Hawks have to investigate SARS. A cycle of claims and counterclaims develops between Gordon on one side, Zuma's man Moyane, Abrams and the Hawks on the other. By August 23, 2016, the battle is truly underway. Gordon, Pelé and von Loggenberg are summoned to appear in front of the Hawks. In a bold move, Gordon refuses. Despite the presidency publicly appearing supportive and the ANC downplaying the feud between Zuma and his finance minister, the media is rife with reports about a power play to sideline Gordon for control of the treasury. On October 11th, after months of denying it was pursuing Gordon, the NPA announces it will charge Gordon, Mahashula and Pelé with fraud. The charges are an early pension payout to Pelé, and a vague claim about their involvement in the so-called rogue unit. Gordon fights back, publicly questioning the Hawks and the NPA's motives. As the court date nears, public pressure builds, with opposition parties and civil society rallying behind him. Then, explosive revelations of a hostage drama at SARS breaks in the press. Moyane and his henchmen are filmed attempting to coerce the SARS Deputy Director of Law to rescind his backing of Gordon, and rather endorse the fraud charges against him. This bizarre turn of events results in an embarrassment for Abrams. He has little choice but to announce on October 31st that the NPA will be dropping the trumped-up charges against the three men. Abrams is called before Parliament to answer for himself, and the rogue unit strategy appears to have unraveled. For now. The game of state capture, however, in which SARS is only one piece, is still very much in play.